didn't get a double check when I came in, but at annual conference this year, this was some of the artwork that was created. Um, there's gonna, we can post the information. I can't remember the artist's name off the top of my head. Do you know the artist's name? Uh, see, I'm putting you on the spot. See, okay. It, this is a picture made about the West Virginia Annual Conference. And if you get a closer look at it, it'll show all the different parts of our, our uh, conference geographically and some of the mission and ministry work we're about. They used the artwork for multiple things, but they made it into a puzzle. And it was meant to be one sent home with every layperson that attended. The clergy didn't get it. Just the laity. It's all right. But point is, there are some extras. So if you like to work puzzles or you just like the artwork, I brought some back. They're out here in the entryway. And you're invited to take one with you and work it. And if you don't want to keep it, you can circulate them around. But I brought a few home. They're out there. Please use them and enjoy them. And we'll get you the story about the artwork um, and the larger update about annual conference. But there it is. That one's not in the bulletin, but they're out there, so they're free for the taking. The next thing that is in the bulletin for you is a reminder about the Tyran Parish work team. Uh, the deadline to register is today, so if you've been wondering if you should go, all are welcome. It doesn't matter if you have the skill level to go and do uh, home repairs, sometimes just the gift of your presence to be there and visit with um, Folks who may come by the mission site, the work site, just stop by. Uh, sometimes they need a listening ear. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I can't commit to a whole week, that's fine too. I bet, I'm putting Rona on the spot, but I bet if you wanted to drive down for the day and come and be a part of the work, if that's all of the time you have, they will welcome you to do that too. So I hope you'll uh, consider going and helping uh, us spread the good news of great joy through our, our work at Tyrant. It is one of our annual conference mission sites that our apportionment dollars goes to support. So that'll be one of the ways. If, also, if you've wondered how your apportionment dollars work, you can go and see firsthand uh, how this mission operates in that community. All right, a couple other things just to keep on your radar. Related with Tyrant work team, we always take a special offering to help offset the cost of building materials. That way the dollars that they have there at the mission site can go further. So for us to do that before the team leaves, we're gonna do that offering next Sunday, the 23rd. So make sure if you um, wanna do that, you come prepared to share that gift and just mark your check or the envelope, Tyrand work team. And then lastly, this Tuesday at 8.30 in the morning, we're gonna have coffee and conversation at the coffee shop. You don't have to drink coffee, you don't have to drink tea. You can just come and enjoy each other's presence and engage one another in conversation. I hope you'll join us. Any other pressing announcements this morning? Um, All right, so the men's uh, special anthem this morning is West Virginia Hills. And as Mr. Lemon said, you're invited to sing. If you know it, sing along. All right, any other announcements this morning? Okay, well, oh, yes. All right, happy Father's Day. I was going to do it as a joy, so that just leads us right into the joys. Oh, and we celebrate all the fathers in our lives uh, who model the fathering love of God, our Father, to us. All right. <laughs> okay. They do. Um, we just wanted to give you this. Oh, well, I'll talk loud. <laughs> um, we just want to celebrate another milestone in your cancer journey. And hope you'll enjoy these beautiful roses. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So sweet. Well, thank you all for your continued support. That milestone is I am done with my active treatment and I've moved to maintenance. 
but keep their prayers coming because I still have blood work and scans and all that kind of stuff. So thank you, thank you. Are there other joys this morning? Yes, Nancy. So Tuesday, your birthday, your sister-in-law's birthday, and then remembering Tom on his birthday, too. Other joys? Okay, let's turn to concerns. Anyone have a concern to share by name only? Judy Arnold. Arnold. Lindsay Bush. Bush. Janice Janice Stevens. Russell DeVore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the family of Josiah Robinson. All right. How about saints? Anyone have a saint that they're remembering today? Okay. Oh, sorry. Your mom, Betty Wilson. And someone reminded us at 8.30, we remember, there's a lot of us remembering fathers on Father's Day who've gone on to join the saints. All right. Well, before we turn to the prelude, we have to take time to celebrate birthdays. Does anyone here have a birthday in the month of June? (laughs) Okay, a couple. Yeah, I saw the couple hands there. I know there was quite a few. We only had one or two at 8.30 this morning. So I guess the June people must all be celebrating today. Okay. Anyone have a June wedding anniversary? Okay. Summer, summer weddings, yes. All right. Other, anyone else have a special celebration in the month of June? Okay, well, let's offer a prayer of blessing on all those celebrating. A loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the many ways in which we have known your joy and experienced your love through those who celebrate special moments in June, from birthdays to anniversaries and other special moments. May they continue to be bearers of your light in this world and all that they do. This we pray in your son's name. Amen. And now I invite you to prepare your hearts, minds, and souls for worship as we hear our prelude. Please stand and join me in the gathering prayer. O gracious and loving God, help us to be part of a movement that will open doors to new hopes, dreams, and possibilities for our church and in our own lives. Use Grace Church as a vessel to bring people into your kingdom. Heal us, renew us, and make us like Christ. May your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for the congregational entry.
please join me in the call to worship. God interrupted Samuel with an unexpected call. God surprised Jesse, choosing his youngest son, David, to be king. Here I am, Lord, me. We join with Christ and are a part of God's new creation. Almighty God, we come to join the harvest. Gather us in, O Holy One, for we would be your people. Amen. The hymn of praise is number 707. Please join me in the invocation. Holy God, we want to be like Samuel, ready to change course when you call, ready to do our part even when it isn't quite what we expect. O oh, glorious spirit of surprise, open our hearts to your word in fresh new ways. Amen. Well, you all may be seated, and if the children will come forward for children's time, we might, um, well, we have a bunch in the nursery. I was just going to throw out, I'm talking out a lot. Do you guys have any objections if I go get the nursery crew and bring them down and they go back out, or would it be easier just to leave them? I'm okay either way. I just, if you think. Hmm? What do you, yes, no? Let's try it. I'll, and then if it goes poorly, y'all. We'll, we'll just learn together, and I'll take the blame because it was my idea. So if you give me a minute, I'll go get our nursery folks, and we will come in, and we'll do the lesson together.
Well, good morning. I'm glad you little ones could come and join us. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? A mustard seed. Well, it is one of the smallest of all seeds, and you'll get one in a minute. Actually, to give you an idea, you can see that there is a little tiny mustard seed in that necklace of mine. And now if Pastor Lauren will give each of you a seed, I don't think you want to put it in your mouth because it might be pretty strong. But I want you to have one so you can see how tiny they are. He can hold that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Maybe if you can come up or she'll get that. Okay. <laughs> it's very tiny. It is one of the smallest seeds. Now, why on earth would we be giving out mustard seeds in church? Well, some people think about faith when they hear about mustard seeds. And in fact, on this necklace, there's a little tag, and the word on that tag is faith. Faith is when we love and trust God and we try to live the way he wants us to live. And the reason some people use mustard seeds as a symbol of faith is because of something Jesus said in the Bible. And you'll hear uh, the story read in church later on. I think she lost it. So when Jesus' friends asked him how they could have stronger faith, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. So think about that. You're holding the kingdom of God in your hand there. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it grows to be the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. My printer didn't cooperate too well, but that seed you're holding can turn into this. And I had a picture up, and of course, it's, here it is. Here's a little better picture. So that tiny seed that you're holding can turn into that tree. Now imagine planting that seed and having something like this grow in your garden. Denny, would you like that, a huge tree in your garden? No, probably not. <laughs> so. So what does this seed have to do with faith in God? I think it means that our faith might start out as this teeny, teeny little thing, but if we take care of it and nurture our faith, it can grow bigger and bigger. Now, what do you need to take care of a garden? What do your plants need in a garden or a flower bed? Water, what else? Sunlight. Maybe you might want to put what on it? Well, you plant the seeds and you put good soil and you maybe put fertilizer in the soil. Pardon? You do that with your flower beds too. So those are the things you do to take care of a garden. What do you think your faith needs to go from that tiny seed to a large faith, a big faith where you um, can do great things for God? Should I dump some water on you? No. No. Should I stake you out in the sun? No, definitely not. Sprinkle some fertilizer on you? No, I don't think you'd like that. So what do you need to help your faith grow? What do you need to do? And I know you guys know the answers. No, I don't think so. I agree with you, Nora. Chocolate's awfully good, but I don't know if it helps our faith. Where are you right now? You're in church. To help your faith grow, you go to church. Do any of you go to Sunday school? Yes, that helps your faith grow. Do you uh, listen to Pastor Lauren when she talks to you and listen to the children's sermon right now? Right, that's how you can grow your little tiny faith into a great big faith. And when you have branches big like this, you'll be able to take care of people like these trees take care of the birds. Let's have a little, if you want to take it home and plant it, you have your parents help you, and that will be fine. You can tell us what grows after you plant it, okay? Now, I'd like you to um, say the prayer after me, please, okay? Dear God, 
We ask for a faith that grows bigger and bigger. Thank you for the many ways you help our faith grow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, thank you. Be careful with those muscles. Well, thank you for being patient with me in that experiment. Uh, they're excited about the mustard seeds, so good call. They're Rona, they're appreciating their seeds. Now as they go back, they'll talk more, learn more, continue to grow in their faith. So let us now bow our heads and go to God in prayer. A loving and gracious God, for this day, we give our thanks, and we especially give thanks for all the men in our lives who have reflected to us the love that you have for us, the love like a father. And on this day, we especially give thanks for all the ways in which we have come to know your joy, your hope, your peace, and your love. And we also acknowledge, O oh Lord, there have been parts of this walk and this journey that have been so hard to make step by step, burdens we have shared aloud this day, and some we've held on to. Send all of them, O oh Lord, in your loving and nurturing ways, and as your disciples, keep us open and ready to the ways in which you will invite us to be answers to prayer, to be your hands, your feet, your mouth, your presence, for such a time as this, O oh Lord. But on this day, we especially lift up to you all of those who are sick those who are dying, those who are grieving. We pray for all those who hunger and thirst, for those who seek safe shelter, for those who feel lost and lonely and in search of a friend for this earthly journey. And, O oh Lord, we especially ask that you be with all of those who are in the pursuit of peace, whether it be a need for peace because of a problem at home or work or school or the need for peace. Oh, Lord, because there's the threat of war or terror. Send your son, the Prince of Peace, and faithful disciples alongside to help usher in peace here on earth, just like it is in heaven. And Lord, we give thanks for the leaders of our world, our country, our state, and our community, and ask that you draw near them, granting them your strength, giving them your wisdom helping them to be courageous as they lead us into the future unafraid. And Lord, we ask that you continue to be with your church. Those of us who are here this day at Grace and our brothers and sisters who gather all around the world, may we all be faithful witnesses. May we all share the good news of great joys of Jesus and his love. And as we do that, Lord, we give thanks for the many saints who've journeyed before us who've shown us 
what it means to love you and to love neighbor and to proclaim the good news wherever it is you send us. And as we remember those saints, we're bold to join our voices together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our prayer reflection hymn this morning is hymn 2123, Loving Spirit. It's in the thin black hymnal. And we'll sing verses 1 and 4. I'll invite you to rise and join your voices. Today's gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. We will now hear an anthem from the men's choir. for 
Virginia hills, how unchanged they seem to stand. With their summits pointed skyward to the great Almighty's land. Many changes I can see, which my heart with sadness fills. But no changes can be noticed in those West Virginia hills. Oh, the hills, beautiful hills, how I love those West Virginia hills. Beautiful hills. If for sea or land I roam, still I think of happy home, and my friends among the West Virginia hills. Oh, the West Virginia hills, I must bid you now adieu. I'll still behold the vision of the West Virginia hills. Oh, the hills, beautiful hills. How I love those West Virginia hills. Beautiful hills. If for sea or land I roam, still I think of happy home. And my friends among the West Virginia hills. Well, special thanks to the men's choir for helping us uh, remember West Virginia's birthday this week, but also a reminder, right, of uh, how many of us connect to this land as, uh, as close to heaven as you're going to get here on earth. Almost heaven, right? It is indeed Prince Emmanuel's land. With that, if you'd bow your heads and join me in prayer. O oh, loving and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, before I get into the sermon, I want to extend my thanks to Luke for filling in for me last Sunday while I was at annual conference. And uh, understand he not only provided a wonderful witness, but I think also in his uh, modeling of being a dad, gave a witness. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, thank you to Luke. And I think it's also then a witness we can share with the world, right? That everyone, including the children, have a place in God's kingdom. While it's talking about place in God's kingdom, we talked a little bit about the mustard seed. You've heard that scripture, the children got to hold a mustard seed. And... Uh, any of you here ever plant a mustard seed? All right, well, evidently it's not a very friendly plant. As we heard, you don't want one it's a big bush. You don't want it to necessarily creep up in a place you don't want it to creep up. Any of you here ever have a plant that creeped up where you didn't want it to creep up? Several of you, yes. We have one that we battle here in the church sometimes. We have one plant that likes to overgrow the, in the front. It's doing its job. It grows well, right? Well, let's also be brutally honest. I'll confess when it comes to keeping things alive, I'm not known for my ability to keep plants alive. Anyone else in that boat? Okay, if you want a plant to die, send it to me. In fact, if you have ever been to the Parsonage, you'll notice, other than the plant that Nora gave me from daycare for Mother's Day, that sits by the window, my mom reminds me to water. There are no other living plants. And that one's not much of a witness because it's not doing real well. Any other plant I've ever had, my mom has to take from me and put on hospice care, and she uses her green thumb and revives it. Right? In fact, I have a reputation 
uh, in my family about not being able to keep plants alive, so they don't get them for me unless they're plastic. <laughs> but my great-grandmother, Grace, she had a green thumb and had big gardens and lots of flowers around her house. And when she got to be at a certain point in her life, she would spend the winters at assisted living. She lived to be almost 101, and her doctor didn't like the idea that she might shovel the steps to get out of her house. So she would compromise and begrudgingly go to assisted living. But one of the things she had to do was take some of her plants with her. So when I would go and visit, she took great joy in asking me to water her plants because most of her plants, although they were real, were sitting mixed in with plastic ones that looked very real. And she knew I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So she knew I'd water all of them. And that gave her some good Sunday afternoon fun. And she would just laugh and laugh at me watering the plastic plants yet again. Well, what I wish I had known then, I know now. God didn't say that we had to be good gardeners. God's the gardener. If you look closely in this story, God's the one that makes sure the garden is cared for and comes to fruition. Our job is just to plant the seeds. Now that I can do. I think anybody can plant a seed. It says we're to do it day and night. And you notice it doesn't give very many directions, just that you go out and do it. Just go spread the, the seeds around. So I asked the kids at 8.30 when I led children's time if they kept vegetable or plants or any kind of like fruit seeds on them. Any of you keep those things on you all the time? So you're not going out throwing seeds as you go? Right? That's not the kind of seeds we're called to plant in this particular text. We're called to share seeds that come from Jesus Christ our Lord, the biggest one being Christ's love. And sometimes when we go about planting seeds, we don't always know what's going to come to fruition, whether it's in our garden or in someone's life. I was reading a story this week that this woman shared that they bought a house that was called the tree house, not because it was elevated in trees, but because it was surrounded by beautiful trees. And no matter the season, it always offered some kind of beauty and shade. Well, they had a huge storm that took out all of their trees. And then it looked really bare. And they were pretty sad for several years. And they took it upon themselves to go out and plant some trees and try to plant some flowers around and build this space to be beautiful again. But what they didn't account for was that there had been other living creatures around when they did have this beautiful uh, trees surrounding their property. And those animals have been a part of scattering seeds. So all of these things that they planted came up alongside things that they had no clue were there. And then they had a whole different case on their hands. They had too many trees. And they had to figure out what would be, need to stay behind and what would need to go so that it would promote growth and beauty. Plant the seeds. That's our job. God does the gardening piece, as she would go on to say. We don't always know when we're planting seeds what might happen in someone's life as a result. Any of you here ever have someone come back and tell you thank you for the seed that they planted, that you planted? Well, don't take that lightly. That's a gift. Sometimes you'll never hear the results or see the fruit born from the seed that you planted. One of the things that I found uh, beautiful about ministry is that I have been in communities where my grandfather served as a pastor. Not in the same church, but like in the same district. So he was in this district, for example, he served in Moorfield and at Oakland. And in the Parkersburg area, he was the district superintendent. And when I was in that Parkersburg area, I had the great privilege of filling in at a graveside service as a family was in desperate need. They were living out of the area and they had returned home for this burial and they didn't have a church connection anymore. 
So how they got my number, I'm not sure, but they called me. And when the service was over, they shared with me that the woman I had just buried, my grandfather had performed her wedding when no one else in that community would perform a wedding for her because she was pregnant before she got married. That was the child that she was pregnant with telling me that and then shared what an impact that had had on their family, that sign of grace and how their family was built from that moment in a different way. So there's all these other children and grandchildren at the graveside. So it was sort of one of those moments my grandfather never got to bear witness to. He will never know, because he was already deceased when that happened, that somebody he married took that as an opportunity to receive good news from God, to experience grace and love, and it shaped their whole family tree. That was a gift, a gift to me. I hope at some point you'll get those kinds of glimmers as well. And sometimes when we sow seeds, we may not have a lot of hope about the work we're doing. Many of you here ever work with difficult people before or encounter a difficult person in life's journey? Well, I think some of you are being kind and not raising your hand, but uh, we're all going to encounter people in this lifetime that can be hard to work with. And it may be a very short encounter, but the decision we make in that moment around our discipleship and the witness we bear matters. If we're planting seeds of God's love and God's hope, right, versus other opposite seeds that sometimes are tempting as in our human nature to share. Denver Moore and Ron Hall wrote a book together, same kind of different as me, and Denver shares in that book a story about a man that was dropped off at the homeless shelter named Mr. Ballantyne. And as they tried to offer him some help, they found that he was not the kindest of people around. And his go-to vocabulary was basically curse words. It didn't matter what they did for him, they would get cussed out day in and day, day in and, and night. And eventually they realized that there was, he required more care than their homeless shelter could offer. So they helped him get uh, accepted as a ward of the state and went to a nursing home. And some people at that shelter were sort of celebrating, right? The difficult person was going to be gone. Any of you ever been in that position before? A place of celebration because the difficult person's moving on? But Denver couldn't let him go. Denver felt this deep sense that he needed to continue to bear good news of great joy, to plant seeds of love in his life. So he continued the same tradition he had been a part of the last few years. He had got a plate every day and took it over to the nursing home and shared it with them. There was no response of kindness, just cussing him out. Why would you do this? I don't want this, right? But one day when Denver went, he took a friend, and that friend asked the gentleman, is there something I could get for you? And after cussing him out, he said, fine, I'll take a cigarette and some insure, but you better watch yourself because they don't want me to have that stuff in here. He was evidently on a diet and wasn't allowed to have a certain amount of calories, and you can understand why they wouldn't want him to have a cigarette. But this gentleman went out and obliged and sent the items back in with Denver. And this blew Mr. Ballantyne away. He cussed first, but he said, why would your friend do that? I was not kind to him. I said really mean words. And he bought this for me? And that was finally his window. He witnessed to him and said, well, my friend's a Christian. And he wanted to show you love. Jesus is love. And in that conversation, it led to a point of him saying, well, why do you come every day? And he said, I'm a Christian, and I want to show you Christ's love. Well, Mr. Ballantyne, comes to find out, had never been to church in his 85 years of life. Hadn't really heard about this Jesus guy. 
And so the fact that people were kind to him, that somebody showed up every day in his life, had evidently made an impact. It came to a point where Mr. Ballantyne did his best to clean himself up, especially his language, and accepted an invitation to go to church with Denver, where he now worships as part of their community. Yes, Denver got to witness fruit in this lifetime, but I'm sure there were moments on the journey where he probably thought, maybe my friends were right. I should have given up hope. Why do I do this to myself, right? Our scripture reading is here as a reminder for us in our modern day discipleship that we are called to share seeds of God's love with all that we meet. And that won't always be an easy thing to do or our first reaction. We may sometimes want our humanness or allow our humanness to win out. I won't call anyone to confession by any means, but I know from my own personal experience, sometimes we say or think or do things, especially when we're in vehicles and dealing with traffic, right? As an example of a witness we offer. Or maybe when we're not having the best of days, we don't always offer the best witness off the hand. It's a challenge for us to be people who sow seeds of God's love always, day or night, no matter what may come our way or who may be in that path, but to sow them and to sow them and just trust God to let God bring them to fruition and to prune what needs to be pruned, knowing that that work is important to the kingdom of God, building up that kingdom of God in the here and now, making earth look more like heaven every, with every seed we plant. So go forth from this place, planting your seeds and proclaiming the good news. You don't have to be a gardener. You just have to show love and trust in the great gardener, our God. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to rise for our hymn of preparation. It's him, it's, this is a day of new beginnings, hymn 383, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4 only. may be seated and if our ushers would now come uh, prepare to come forward we'll offer our gifts for mission and ministry to God
please join me in the offering prayer. Holy God, magnificent, sustaining farmer of the future, receive these gifts, we pray. Through our offering, help us know in some surprising way that you are bringing into being something wonderful and new. Amen. Well, as the ushers head back to their seats, I invite you to turn to one another and offer a wave or symbol of God's peace. And I invite you to take that peace of Christ out with you as you seek to sow seeds of love. Amen.